Recording in progress. Okay, so welcome to the EOF implementers call. Um, and as usual, um, let's kick off with the uh, client updates. Um, uh, and do you want to do the updates for review one? I don't know if there are any. I think even one didn't have significant updates. Mostly people were on holidays. Yep. Uh, I don't recall anything either. Um, uh, Riley, um, are you with the client team or um, just listening or? Uh... Uh, I'm just listening. Okay, yeah. Cool. Welcome from Art, from Art Blocks. I know we're we're kind of interested in just keep a chat, keep a tabs on this one. So. Yep. Okay. Cool. Welcome. And um, I think that's all the clients. Today seems like there's not many people attending. Um, Charles, you just typed into the chat that there are no updates from Viper. And you have a question. OK, uh, so that's, that's it in terms of the client and Compiler updates and then the spec updates. We have uh, the topic that we want to discuss is the version of the EOF which doesn't require the irregular state change, which we touched upon in the previous meetings as well. Um, but uh, maybe uh, maybe Charles, you can you can go ahead with your question now. Uh, yeah, it's just this um, pull request. Uh, pull up. So this discussion we were having on the the init code mode validation in yeah for reverts. So if the question is what happens if the container has nothing but revert or invalid, and um, should that be banned in init code mode? Mm -hmm. And my Instinct is to allow it, um, but it would also be okay to ban it because I don't think it's very useful to only revert in create mode because yeah, you but can't even tell if it's if it's revert or why it reverted. But um, this this concerns the version. Uh, that you're proposing that we do validate the init code mode during EOF validation, correct? Yes. So it just um, <clears throat> makes the rule a little bit more complicated, which is some containers are runtime for sure, some containers are init code for sure, and some are like um, chimeras. They can be So within the within the proposition to actually validate this rule in EOF validation, would are you opting to allow the uh, these uh, containers without revert or invalid with only reverts and invalids or not allow it? Yeah, that's the question. That's up for discussion. Okay. Um, I I don't know. I don't have an opinion on this and. Right now, the design to not validate this is kind of the baseline design. I have not given it too much thinking. I think uh, in terms of what your proposal has, I would mainly just, you know, what I was asking for is just to, to be aware of what the rule is. Yeah. So if it's allowed, then I think right now, Last time I looked, this this proposal um, did not allow for these containers because they were treated as right. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but they, they didn't. They weren't allowed. And if they are not allowed, then I would just spell it out in explicitly. Whereas if they are allowed, then then you know some changes need to be made, and and that's it. Does uh, anybody have an opinion about this, or is it like it's? Kind of inconsequential. 
I don't know, anyone? Does this also affect validation of QF create of parent in the parent container? I'm not sure what's the entire proposal. I haven't read the PR yet. Mm. So, okay. Um Okay, Charles, can you basically can you... um the idea is uf create cannot reference a subcontainer which has return or stop and um return contract cannot uh reference a container that has return contract It basically um, block. It basically the idea is that it blocks the invalid runtime behavior at validation time. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's okay either way. Like. It's okay to require that init code actually calls return contract, or it's okay to disallow it. I, I think so. Yeah, it seems there is no reason to ban it, I would say. To ban? To ban EOF create access in the container, it only has revert or invalid yeah yeah i don't right i don't really see a use case for doing that but it's also a bit draconian to do it so i'll, I'll just um change it to more match the runtime the original runtime semantics okay all right so then the next topic uh, is the version of eof which doesn't require the irregular state change so without the creator contract. It is described in this PR to the mega spec, if you're interested. And uh, I guess there are some, uh, there have been recently voices in support of this, for this version, just to avoid the regular, the irregular, irregular state change. And uh, there has been like the first design, which used uh, which which aimed to use the data section of the uh, init code for the data, and then the change was to use the call to have the call data being sort of appended after the init container. And now this changes in the PR. Um, I don't know. Uh, we don't have Dano or Alex here to, to voice their opinions, but I think Dano is supportive of this, at least of an A version without the regular state change. And Alex was also, I think, um, had concerns initially, but then uh, said it's it's fine. Um, does anyone have, have any other opinions or? Arguments for or against. Well, I guess not. Um, well, I, I would say I'm tentatively in favor of including this because I also don't like the regular state change option and I like the property that with this proposal existing tooling would be used without any change and just can deploy UF. So no change to tooling is required. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm not super familiar with this. How do you get rid of the um, 
uh, the special create contract. Okay, so the idea is to retrofit the legacy creation transaction. So when there's, there's a transaction with empty two, like the legacy creation transaction, but it uh, starts with EOF prefix. It's a uh, its data starts with the EOF prefix. Then it then the data is treated as an uh, init container for EOF, and that's it. Most mostly. And um, how. That actually sounds more intuitive to me. How do you do it with the creator contract? You have to like call the magic contract and it calls TX create. Yes. Well, you can call any contract that uses TX create. The creator contract, it, its magic is that it's, 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 you know, it's introduced with the irregular state change if you don't have the other option. So it is like the, first first UF contract out there that then can spawn more UF contracts. So, you know, anyone is free to deploy a creator contract after uh, after EOF is activated using these uh, retrofitted legacy transactions. And then TX create just stays the same and can be used for its, um, its uh, intended purposes. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know that like ZK Sync and maybe some other ZK chains have this magic creator contract. And I'm not sure if they okay. considered the, this kind of legacy creation transaction type and why they rejected it. Okay. Why, why did they, I mean, what context is like, for the creator contract? They do something similar to this um, creator contract, but I don't know why. I think Daniel might know. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying that there is kind of a precedent for having the, the magic creator contract. Okay, though it's not on L1. It's not on the mainnet. And I no. think the and theory or stage also... on mainnet is, is the problematic part. Um, I also don't really see why having in a regular state changes that big of an issue to be honest <laughs> it's because of well it's it's scary by itself i guess it, on some levels probably more on the client um development perspective and also sort of we anticipate a strong pushback against it on or all core devs for this reason. Yeah, I think they use the, the I think CK Sync uses the creator contract for something about code introspection. So like, uh, I, I don't know the details too much, but it's something like the creator contract like puts it in a registry when you call it, puts the code in a registry when you call it, which is like okay. actually something kind of similar to UF. And then when you want to call when you want to deploy that contract or deploy a subcontainer of that contract or something, then it's in the registry. So you reference it by the hash instead of the code. Uh, but why, just to clarify, the creator contract you're talking about is on the L2 or on all the L1? It's on the L2. It's on and the L2. Okay. I'm pretty I... sure it has something to do with uh, code introspection and okay. referencing code by hash, but I don't know much more than that. I know I can I, I can take a look or, or if you can uh, produce a link to follow uh, if you can find something. But I, I have a hunch that this is a pre, like a different use case that might be wrong. Okay, thanks. Let me... Let me open the link and then uh, let's continue. Um, okay, and I guess uh, if anyone has any other design ideas to this uh, 
uh, these special creation transactions that can do EOF, then please uh, comment on the on the PR that I have linked to. Otherwise, I think the conclusion is that we are in support of this design. And that's probably it for this topic. Do we have any other spec updates? Anything, anything else altogether to discuss? Um, one thing I found kind of interesting, which we don't really have to discuss in the group call, but um, because EOF like freezes code, we can actually do something really clever about storing code. So we can like deduplicate a lot of code. And I think um, that the cost of storing code can come way down. Um, maybe that's like more interesting in the context of how EOF and Verkle interact. All right, do you want to discuss this uh, now or write it up somewhere? Is it a store that like, fetched a code from transactions that deployed it? Then... Yeah, exactly. I, I, met, I had a couple comments in the EVM Discord. Yeah, but yeah. basically, um, the thing is like code, and this is like actually something I do in Viper, which is like metadata is stored in the init code because it's usually cheaper because it's in call data. Um, and you can like index option, but anyways, so like the interesting thing about UF is like code can never be created from inside the EVM. So it's like all in transaction data. And so like to find the code for some contract, you just like need a pointer to a transaction. But it's in like in the, in the opposite direction of where, where for force is going like the to, to remove the historical data and i mean i have two comments about that one is i'm not like totally sold on 4444 um the argument for it is a little weak in my opinion because um the analysis that was presented at the last all core devs um didn't take into account that it's much cheaper to store flat data like block um information and call data than to than the state database, which needs to be, uh, you know, like some kind of hot key value store. And then the other thing is, even if you delete old state, uh, you can still store code much more cheaply in like an auxiliary database that isn't the hot database because code can't be updated. And it can be deduplicated as well. Okay. I think there's something in like legacy EVM, like I guess in theory you can deduplicate code in legacy EVM, but it's like harder um, for a few reasons. Like previously we had like metamorphic contracts from create two. Um, we also had things like, um, uh, yeah, I think it's just harder to do that while the EVM is running. But in this case, all the code is coming from outside the EVM. So we, like the hash is known outside of the EVM. So you can store everything in like a super cheap database. It should be, in my opinion, about as cheap as call data instead of 200 bytes per, sorry, 200 gas per byte. But this, I mean, sounds interesting, though I think it's just like a, it builds upon EOF in of itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It doesn't actually need to even be part of the EOF spec. It can yep. be introduced I as a pricing it. change later or like as an yep. implementation detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly this. All right, then um, do we have anything else?
Vou descansar. just um i guess uh end a bit earlier today because there's uh many people on holidays and uh and we can wrap up now um so thank you everyone and see you ne next week thank you thank you, Sorry. See you. bye bye, bye.